The Todd Shapiro Show. Canada Laughs, Sirius XM 168. Kevin Hobbs? Oh, let's just go. Let's just go. Put on Kevin Hobbs right now. Kevin, sorry, dude. We're in a real deep part of the uh, deep, I mean, not hard, but deep conversation. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. No worries, big man. Thanks. And we got the owner, founder, CEO, a man who can make the Simon Cowdy. We have uh, Mark Breslin, the owner of Yuck Yucks in the studio today. Oh, Hi. that's awesome. How's it going? Define it. <laughs> well, you're in there with Todd, so anything really goes. Oh, okay. <laughs> how great is that? Uh, Kevin uh, Hobbs, the CEO of Vambex. How's everything in the, the – I think it's important for people to know the blockchain world and the space you're in doesn't always mean the crypto world, right? <laughs> that is true. Yeah, blockchain and crypto are kind of separate from each other, even though they kind of go hand in hand. But the crypto space right now is – you know, kind of in free fall, but uh, blockchain is thriving. So, I mean, might as well talk about the price of Bitcoin because we'd be silly not to. And so, uh, some that you know extremely well and haven't done ICOs and been involved from all of them and still having your own like uh, Rocket and uh, Ether Party and stuff. What What is going on right now, in your opinion? Well, I mean, I've kind of been talking about this for, geez, probably six months. In January... Well, I mean, maybe even before January, but right now January and February, a lot of money started coming into the market without the barrier to entry. So that means that people were just buying up these new tokens through ICOs with like U.S. dollars or fiat currency without having to buy a Bitcoin or Ethereum, which were the kind of barrier tokens to get in at the time. And what that did is it, it kind of created like infinite supply with no demand on the market. And, you know, that over the last like, few months since March, we've been seeing kind of the fallout from that slowly, slowly, slowly. And now we've lost uh, a lot of consumer sentiment uh, in the market. So, I mean, that, that's kind of kind of where I see it right now. And unless we kind of put those barriers back up, uh, I mean, especially Ethereum, because so much things have been built on Ethereum, it could go to zero. So is it, these are some of your fears that you think it could, it could sink right down and, and not exist? Well, I mean, the value of it, I mean, it mean, cannot exist because, you know, the only reason to purchase, um, like, Ethereum right now, or was at the time, was to get into an ICO or create an ICO. There's not too many applications right now that are actually working in, in real life where people would need to kind of use the tokens to pay for the gas or the transaction fees on the network. Mm. So, you know, what, what's the point to really, to really hold it? Do people within your industry get mad at you for talking this candidly about it? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you give a fuck? <laughs> I, 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 hey, man, I got to be honest. I mean, I guess that, that's my thing in here. I just tell it as it is. Or as I see it, I should say. Uh, Mark Breslin, do you do you, does this world? Do you have any? Do you follow? Am, Do you know? I am so low tech yeah. that I call my visa charge x that's how <laughs> out of it i am when it comes to this stuff i'm sorry i can't contribute anything to this conversation no no worries uh i mean we we, we should we start accepting uh ether party at all yuck yucks clubs with kevin <laughs> you, you should definitely start accepting fuel at all yuck clubs. or fuel yuck yeah clubs. fuel yeah definitely do that actually we uh we just made a massive announcement today in a company uh, internally that we're going to be putting out in the next two weeks, but uh, I actually don't know why I shared that right now. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, you're not allowed to. If you're not allowed to talking about it, dude. Like, uh, thanks a lot. Why don't you just put your hand right on my thigh and then stop? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be a global first. Maybe we'll put it out on your show in uh, next, maybe next week. In a couple of weeks, okay. How's uh, and you're you're out in Va in uh, Vancouver right now? I am, buddy, sitting at my desk working away. How's everything going along? Mark would, I think, really like this one. It's a project you've talked about uh, a few times on our program before, and I think it's really exciting, uh, not to mention again. and relates back to the industry, at least. Uh, and Mark's been involved in movies and stuff. How's Mogul coming along? And maybe give a, another brief synopsis of it for people who may not have heard it in the past. Sure. I mean, Mogul is it, it's like steamrolling. Everybody that hears about it wants to be a part of it. Uh, almost too fast to kind of keep up with right now. So, so Mogul kind of uh, attacks the problems in the film industry with the lack of transparency with funding. Um, it also helps build a, a global community of actors, producers, directors, anybody in the film industry that can attach themselves um, to scripts uh, in the early days if they like them. And these scripts will be voted on using um, like, kind of like the power of the crowd, how Deadpool got funded through, through like a viral message 
which which allows these scripts to attach an audience to it before it's even filmed. It, it's pretty cool. It's like we call it fluid film financing. So it attacks the front end of the value chain uh, of the uh, of the film industry to kind of help fund indie films, um, you know, uh, anything that could be from like a $5 million feature to a $25 million feature. Uh, and you get to attract a global audience who can invest in these things and share in the profit and then see how all the money is getting spent um, throughout the entire process of a, of a film getting funded. So it's, it's pretty cool. Mark, Mark's, Mark's still not following. No. <laughs> no, I follow it, and I think it's great, although I have the, I sort of come from the other world. Yeah. Where, you know, a guy sits at a big desk, and he's smoking a big cigar, and under the desk, his secretary is giving him a blowjob, and he gets on the phone, and he says, make the picture. That's my kind of background. <laughs> uh, it, it's those big guys. Nothing I that. hate more than the word community. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, you know, with blockchain, it's all about community. No, I'm a community of one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Preslin's own blockchain. It's just one block. That's it. I'm blocking well, the chain, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you the truth. Do people try to block the chain because of the transparency? I love that. Hell yeah. Why do you think we have forks in the blockchain industry? People are like, no, nope, don't like what you're doing. I'm going to stop you right here and go another way. Uh, yeah, I guess it's resistance that people do want power and control. Is it? Is that more of a? Uh, and I'm not calling Mark. I'm not calling you old here. I'm not doing that. But is that more of a a younger, more millennial kind of uh, uh, this more socialism, more like let's let's all just be one and equal and and have the opportunity to be transparent and see what everyone's up to so we know we're not, none of us are being taken advantage yeah, of? Yeah, that sounds great. You know what? Okay. <laughs> you know what? I want to take all the millennials in the world and treat them the way the Argentinians treated uh, journalists during the junta. <laughs> <laughs> Those millennials, see, you know what? They don't even understand that, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. What? Um, That's why I can say that. <laughs> but is, it, but is, that part, is that part of it, Kevin? The, the inclusion, yeah. I mean, the whole point is, is to, to get more eyes on things, more transparency, so that we, we really can't have these big corporations kind of like hiding everything from us, taking all the money, the rich getting richer, and, you know, the poor staying poor. But, you know, it's all about kind of, you know, it's not, it's not exactly like spreading the wealth out like that is, but it's at least showing people and, and basically um, incentivizing people to do work and then getting paid for the work that they do. Will people now be discouraged, though, by the whole premise of it based on maybe they invested in Bitcoin or Ethereum and have lost some funds since its height, you know, last Christmas? Uh, and do you think that's going to hurt the whole ideology of this? Oh, of course. Anybody, everyone gets upset when uh, when they're losing money. A lot of people got in at the hype, like, you know, when, when the Bitcoin is like t over 20,000 Canadian. And that's when people started really rushing in. And unfortunately, that was like like the apex and the, and the beginning of the crash. You know, so a lot of people people are upset. People get in without. People tend to rush into these sort of trends and and tag on without really understanding you know what's underneath them. And I think that's the real problem. There's a lack of education with a lot of people coming into the industry thinking I'm going to make a quick buck here. This is great, and all of a sudden you know they're they're losing money that they shouldn't have invested in the first place. You know what's weird is I have some hope it's going to pick back up a little bit again. Like, I, I don't know why I, I, I feel like that. I just, I watch trends. I, maybe that's more of a trend thing. It's, 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 it's that old, and I mention it all the time, the Warren Buffett quote, you know, like, but be fearful when others are greedy and, and, and be greedy when others are fearful. And I, and I feel like maybe that might help some momentum. Does that, do you, do you any optimism? I, I do. I mean, I'm waiting for some, uh, some announcements out of the, out of the States. Um, I think after the tw there's one on the 26th of this month that we're just waiting to hear from to see if that's going to give um, kind of give some confidence back to the market because the market by itself it, it, it basically goes free fall and then flat and we haven't had any positive news in a, in a long time and so I think there's there's something coming out on the 26th and there's an announcement about um, a Bitcoin ETF um, in December which I think should help and I mean if we can start that momentum back up you know who knows. We still have people saying that it's going to go to 15000 bucks by the end of the year. I can't see that. There's uh, And then there's John McAfee who uh, has said that he would eat his own dick <laughs> live on social media if it didn't hit a million dollars in 2020 or something. Have you ever met uh, this guy? 
No, but have talked to him. I mean, hasn't he tried that before? Isn't this the guy that they did a big documentary on? It was I saw the doc at TIFF. It was fantastic. Yeah, he's like uh, he created the Mac and Mac via uh, security or the, the but software. Then there were all kind of, there was something in a third world country where he tried to set himself up as a dictator. I right. think I don't. I haven't seen the documentary, but I know he's a he's right, a wacko. It's the same guy. We're it's talking the same about. guy. Oh, it's the yeah, same guy. It was a great documentary. Wow. Oh, interesting. I, I, it never played anywhere. I think there was a litigation against it. Oh, I think I he see. initiated litigation against the doc. And how do you see it then? At TIFF. Yeah. Oh, it was at TIFF. Yeah, oh, okay. It was two, two, two no, years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. So you you've talked to him or you no? Yeah, yeah, we've spoken to him. Jeez, uh, how long ago was that? Over a year ago, I think when he was really first starting to get uh, into the blockchain space, he was talking to a number of companies and a friend of ours, um, you know, Tiffany, I believe at one point was his assistant. Interesting guy. I uh, didn't really talk that much. Don't, don't really know if I want to give an opinion. <laughs> okay. I, I, I just want uh, Tiffany to write a book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be good. Uh, awesome, Kev. Well, when are you getting back to Toronto? Uh, you know, it all depends on kind of meetings there, boss. I'd love to get back there and check out some more games and stuff with you in the box. That's for sure. But uh, This guy has tickets for every event that goes on at the Scotiabank Theater. Uh-huh. And he's in Vancouver. <laughs> wow. So I have a lot of tickets. That, <laughs> that happened at the Scotiabank Theater. Because uh, uh, we're, we're, we're at the ISCO, whatever it's called. Who cares? Get the name right, at least. Um, and Van Beck's group, by the way, we have an announcement to make. Um, starting next week, we're going to be doing, courtesy of them, uh, and thank you, Kevin, and to your entire team, and Elisa and Taylor, who helps out there, uh, ticket giveaways. We're doing some giveaways for the Christmas season. We're going to come up some contesting, and we're very grateful. We know that we get a ton of response whenever we do that kind of stuff. And uh, once again, we appreciate you doing that and, and helping our supporters out. Oh, of course. Love it. I mean, someone's got to use the seats. That's right, man. That's right. Who's going to the Raptor game tomorrow night, by the way? <laughs> oh, you're going to have to talk to Taylor, who's doing that. She's managing all the, all the tickets. No, I think they're taken. Uh, but uh, listen, man, we uh, we love you, and we appreciate your candidness, as always. Uh, make sure you follow Kevin. What do you have? Van Beck's K, right? Yeah, Van Beck's K. And if you have any questions for any of the team within anything to do with this space, uh, we encourage you to just tweet at Todd Shapiro Show. And if you have questions for Van Beck's, uh, we'll bring him to light next Thursday when Kevin's on again. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Always a good time. Cheers, man. Thank you. Bye. The Todd Shapiro Show. You are the greatest hero in American history. Sirius XM, Canada Laughs. Channel 168. 